At the base of the Omboroko Mountains in central Namibia, it's a quiet morning. The inhabitants of the Okanjima Wildlife Reserve are used to a life of peace and tranquility. But this morning, they're about to get a rude awakening. The Africat Foundation's rescue and release officer, Dave Houghton, needs to get to the far side of the reserve in a hurry. And to do that, he's taking to the skies. Hey! Three days ago, Five-year-old female cheetah, Tongs, had a tough introduction to life on the reserve. Hammer. Nice, be nice. After being attacked by her brother, Hammer, and his three companions, Tongs was left to face the challenges of the reserve alone. We kind of hoped that it would all be a nice, happy ending and they'd all get back together, but unfortunately, nature doesn't work like that. After two nights in the reserve, Tongs will be hungry. Dave wants to check on her progress and also make sure she hasn't been subjected to any further attacks. I need to find where she started to go and see her and check that she's not too close to the four. It would feel a lot better if uh, the four were a quite a distance away from Tongs uh, because, you know, she's got enough on her plate at the moment, getting used to her new surroundings and and learning the whole new drill now of having to look after herself. And basically, you know, one thing at a time, we don't have to have, to have another fight now. Um, so, the further apart they are, the better. It can take hours to drive from one side of the reserve to the other. And picking up a signal from the cheetah's radio collar on a 40,000 acre site can be tricky on the ground. From the air, Dave can zero in on any cheetah within minutes. In this case, I have two aerials, one on either wing. And I can switch um, from left to right. And that way, uh, this tells me which side of the, of the plane that the, the animal is. I'm now at uh, six and a half thousand feet. And I've now got a signal on Tonks. And it's stronger on the left side. So now what I need to do is a tight turn to the right. So here goes. bumpy today. This isn't for the weak hearted or the weak stomach, this. Thankfully, the telemetry signal reveals that Tongs has kept a safe distance from the other four cheetahs. On the ground, Dave needs to check her body condition to find out if she's eaten. I can see you, my girl, hiding behind the grass. Huh? How are you doing? She wasn't far in, I knew that from the telemetry, but uh, I do want to see her. And if it doesn't look like she's eaten, I actually want to give her some water because then I don't know if she's drunk, you know, at somewhere else, but uh, it'd be nice to give her a bit of a head start on the water side of things. In the wild, cheetahs can survive for three or four days after a decent meal. Dave can see that Tong's stomach is empty and suspects she hasn't yet made a kill. Hey, Tongsy, want some water? Hmm? You want some water? Come, come. There's no food, baby. No, no, it's water, 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 water. Ah, ah, ah. Come on. Yeah. Water, water. 
Dave could decide to step in and feed Tom's. Water. But her behavior suggests she still has plenty of energy. She thinks it's food. Um, that's why she's going at it, sir. Tongs, come. It's water, baby, not food. You've got to catch your own food now. There we go. She's hungry, but uh, we, we've got to keep her levels up, and um, obviously water's more important than food at this stage. She can see she's really enjoying that. It's what, almost two litres I put in there. She's lapping it down, no problem. But she's got to learn to hunt, and a little bit of a few hunger pangs is gonna, gonna make her wanna do that. In the wild, cheetahs can go without water for three or four days at a time, deriving much of the fluid they need from their prey. Having failed to make a kill, tongs will be thirsty. The water will sustain her in the coming hours, but to secure her future in the reserve, she needs to bring down prey, and soon. Three miles away, some unusual activity has sent field coordinator Andre Russo, known as AJ, rushing to the reserve's eastern fence line. AJ's received a report concerning a sighting of one of Africad's most elusive cheetahs. Five-year-old male, Cyclops. Cyclops was rescued by the team after being trapped by a farmer. And when he arrived at the foundation, he was suffering with severe glaucoma in one eye. You can see this is a larger eye. You can actually feel it as well and feel there's a certain amount of increase in pressure. Um, the eye is swollen. Despite fears his condition might hamper his hunting ability, Cyclops proved everyone wrong and was soon making a name for himself in the reserve. Ah, oh, there we go, on this side. He killed it right, he killed it the, the proper way, by throttling it. Hasn't broken the skin on this side, but he has on this side here. You kind of look at him and think he hasn't got much going for him, but he actually has. He's, he's, he seems a bit street savvy, that guy, so, which is good. But events in the last 24 hours have left AJ worried for Cyclops' safety. I got a call yesterday from Dean, one of the guides, he managed to see Cyclops make a kill right on the fence, which is normal for him. The odd thing was, this morning when he came back to investigate, Cyclops was gone. And that was a bit strange, so I'm gonna try and investigate and see why Cyclops has left and whether there's any food left. In the wild, cheetahs face stiff competition for food from other, more powerful predators, such as leopards and hyenas. There's a strong chance that Cyclops might have been forced off his kill before he had the chance to eat. You can clearly see the drag mark all along here. See the hoof, the drag mark, you can follow it, it looks like a path all the way through. And he definitely looks like he killed it over there on the road and then dragged it off into the bush, into the thicket here. You can see it's been dragged along here all the way, but you can definitely smell it. In the dense undergrowth, 20 yards from the kill site, AJ spots what he's been looking for. It's the remains of a young kudu, a perfect meal for an adult cheetah. But telltale signs on the carcass suggest that Cyclops might have had competition for his food. Well, you can't see whatever ate it. I doubt that cheetah, this is not cheetah, normal cheetah. You can see that the whole, the whole section, all these ribs have been chewed off. Cheetah can do that. But for instance, here, the hind leg, that thick bone has been bit and broken off. That's not normal cheetah, that is normal for hyena, that type of thing. The whole head is missing as well. So if it's a female hyena with a den site close by, she will break off something, a piece, and take it with her to actual den site. There's a good chance that whoever forced Cyclops off his kill will return after dark to finish their meal. 
AJ decides to set up infrared cameras at the site to confirm his suspicions. If there is a hyena den near here, the team will be careful not to release any new cheetahs in the immediate area. AJ will return in the morning to find out what happened when the sun went down. On the eastern boundary of the Okanjima Wildlife Reserve in central Namibia, male cheetah Cyclops has been forced off a kill. Field coordinator AJ suspects hyenas were responsible. After setting up infrared cameras at the site, he's returned to play back the tapes. The kill has definitely been moved. It was here last night on this side, and has been dragged along here in trails and dragged to over there. So there was definitely company here last night. Just want to make sure there's no company here while I am still here. Lying just a few feet from the carcass, someone is watching AJ's every move. It's five-year-old female cheetah, Tongs. Definitely tongs, so she's been around. Cheetahs can cover great distances in the search for food and water, and tongs has traveled nearly six miles from where Dave gave her a drink yesterday. I'm gonna use the cameras, two cameras I put up last night, and to see whether or not she was the one that dragged a kill or whether she came here this morning. You never know, the cameras will tell, they never lie. <laughs> AJ suspects tongs could have stumbled upon the kill in the night and made the most of her opportunity. Let's have a look. And when he plays back the tape, his suspicions are confirmed. Under the cover of darkness, Tongs approaches the kill. She appears nervous, and with good reason. In the wild, cheetahs eat quickly, then move away to prevent conflict with other predators. If there are hyenas in the area, Tongs could find herself embroiled in an aggressive encounter. But she's hungry after three days without food and seems willing to take a risk. Tongs is clearly improvising to sustain herself in the reserve. But her behavior is certainly not characteristic of a wild cheetah. It's a bit strange because theoretically it's scavenging. Cheetah's not supposed to scavenge. The kill is two days old, so no, it's a bit strange behavior. Maybe she's very hungry and then they will do that. So I think it's a lot to do with hunger. She is hungry, there's food around, might as well take it. Tongs has a lot to learn before she can survive without the support of the team. AJ will continue to monitor her progress in the days ahead. As well as working to give rescued cheetahs a new life in the wild, for the first time ever, the team at Africat are about to release an altogether more challenging group of animals. They're a pack of four African hunting dogs, and today, they'll take their first steps towards freedom. The dogs arrived at the foundation as orphaned pups at just three weeks of age and were hand-fed by Dave and Carla around the clock to ensure their survival. It wasn't something we planned on. You know, we, we just got phoned and, and uh, asked if we'd take them. And they were a real handful, an unexpected handful. It was hard work, but we really grew to love them. And, and it's quite scary putting them out there in the wild. For the past five years, Alpha Male, Spot, and his three sisters, Ricky, Ruby and Rain 
have lived in a one hectare enclosure. Now the reserve is up and running, they're almost ready to be released. I've got absolutely no idea what's going to happen with these guys. It's uh, in the lap of the gods, basically. Before the dogs can be released, the team needs to test how they react to people. They've brought open-top vehicles along, which the dogs will encounter every day in the reserve. If the pack reacts aggressively, the team might have to rethink their plans. The only way to know how the dogs will behave is to open the gate and enter their enclosure. It's a risky exercise. Dave and Carla haven't been in with the dogs since they were four-month-old pups. AJ and Chief Park Warden Maurice Nichols will act as support. We've got to get the dogs away from the gate and somehow get this car in and see what happens. And the whole idea of this little exercise is to see what the dog's reaction is going to be to us. We're also taking in a different car, a car that they don't know and don't associate with food, and just see how they're going to react. Um, if it's a bad reaction, then we'll have to rethink this whole thing. But at this point in time, none of us know what, what's going to happen. Dave opens the gate only when the pack is a safe distance away. Hunting dogs are efficient killers. The team will have to be on their guard. They're armed with sticks, but if the pack decides to target an individual, they could be in serious danger. Um, pretty cool at the moment. Maybe if we just drive a little bit and just see what they do, whether they chase or... Yeah. The dogs approach, but seem more intent on investigating the new smells unearthed by the vehicle's tires. <laughs> The dog's chattering indicates excitement. We could just do a circle mission. But thankfully, they show no interest in the team at all. Hey, you guys, careful. Careful. Huh? Stop them, wish. They're just sniffing where the car was, eh? Yeah. There's going to be so many new smells out there, they're going to be sniffing everything. I would think they're going to ignore people. There's going to be too many other things, distractions. something catches the dog's interest on the far side of the enclosure. Alpha female, Ricky, heads over to investigate, followed by the rest of the pack. Lying on the other side of the fence is none other than Tongs. After a lifetime in captivity, some cheetahs take time to adjust. Dave suspects Tongs gains a sense of security lying near the fence. There's also a good chance she's been attracted by the water inside the dog's enclosure. Dave needs to check her body condition to see if she's managed to make a kill. If she's failed to bring down prey, he'll need to take action. I'm going to give um, her some water. Then that way she'll stand up. I'd better see if she's eaten anything. Now this is a bit of a strange situation. We haven't, we've had the cheetahs walk past here, but we haven't had them, haven't had them stop and relax next to the fence line when the dogs are here. Come, come, here, come. Tongs has now been in the reserve for a week. And already, Dave can see her survival instincts coming to the surface. She's alert now, even though she's drinking, she's looking all around her, ears moving all over the place. She's got to be that way to survive, so... You know, she was here, she was made, attracted by the bowl initially, and then it's pretty hot, so she's just laying in the shade there. I'm looking at her, her stomach and her condition. I mean, she's still in good condition, but she, I don't think she's eaten anything. She might have eaten something small since she came out, but 
I don't, she's not eaten anything of any any kind of large size, so um, I, I want to give her this. Keep her topped up. You hungry, my girl? Come. After growing up in captivity, Tongs is finding it tough going in the reserve. But Dave is confident that given time and support, she'll rise to the challenge. She's run off over to the tree line there, um, get a bit of cover so it's not, which is hopefully a bit of instinct coming in, get a bit of cover so something else doesn't see her with some food and try and steal it from her. Um, she'll be very happy tonight, I'm sure she'll sleep well. But I don't think she's going to be a problem. I think she's going to do well. Um, she just needs to realise where she is and what she's got to do.